Stay tuned for terror. Down, down. Stay tuned for terror. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for terror. Little Lizzie Bowden took an axe. Busy but news, net newsroom, net newsroom background. Phone rings twice. <laughs> Receiver and names in his voice and a filter. Jim. Morning, Bonneton. Jim Davy Daly speaking. Anita. Jim, Jim, help me. Jim, Anita, what's the matter? Anita, I can't tell you, Jim, but it's happened. Oh, come at once. You must come help me. Jim, and that's how it started. On a hot morning in July, Anita's fear voice, field voice, field, fear voice, field voice, pleading with me over the telephone. I left the office, got out of the car. <laughs> Jim, and raced down on the lonely, long, lonely road leading to the house in the hills. I didn't know what I might find when I reached that house. Everything could happen here, there with Anita locked up, all alone with her crazy garden. I thought of my fancy alone with a madman. Almost terrified me. For old Gideon Godfrey was insane. That's what I was afraid of. Anita told me, and her uncle was hexing her, putting a curse of the evil eye in her. Nonsense, of course. Anita was too intelligent to believe such superstitions. But living there all alone under the power of that demented man. Asante was going too. I could see it. Later, she told me about something black. Something black that came into her red room that night. A sort of trailing mist in her face and a voice. Both were horrible. It seemed to whisper to her when she was asleep when she f and then she would fight off the gleaming key tentacles that clutched her body and woke up screaming she called it an incubus a night demon she did gideon goffrey sent it to her auto engine jim yes i had a good reason to be afraid cunning maniac and a frightened girl but alone and the, the gun alone together in a lonely, lonely house. And now that phone call. Card opens. Card door shuts. Jim. Then I, when I pulled in up before the house, I jumped out and made the door for the door. Jim. I don't didn't knock, <coughs> but walked straight in. Jim, Anita stood in a parlour on the far side of the room, waiting. She said nothing. She just held out of her arms. I moved across the room to embrace her. As I walked, I stumbled over something. <coughs> I looked, Jim, I looked down and saw what I stumbled over. A body of Gideon Goffrey lay on the floor. The head split open, crushed with bloody pulp. Anita, Jim, Jim, help me. You must help me, darling. Jim, of course I'll help you. But what happened, Anita? Well, it was it was hot this morning. I was out in the barn. I felt tired and dozed off in the hayloft. All at once I woke up and came into the house. Found my uncle lying there here. Jim, wasn't there any noise? I'll be round. Anita, not a soul. Jim, somebody killed him with an axe. And where is the, is the axe? Anita, the axe? I don't know. It should be by the body if someone killed him. Jim, well, wait just a minute. He don't, Jim, Jim, where are you going? Jim, I'm going to call the police. He don't, no, no, Jim, don't you see? If you call him, you think I did it. Jim, yes, that's right. It's a pretty flimsy story, isn't it, Anita? If only you had a weapon. Fingerprints, I think you felt footprints. Us clues. You sure you were out in the barn when this happened? 
Nita, oh yes. Vim, can't you remember more than that? Nita, no, it's all so confused. I one of my I had one of my dreams, you know. The black thing stuff came. I seem to remember I went to, out there with fishing sinkers. Do you have fishing sinkers in the barn? Listen to me, you're not Nita Lomas. You're Dizzy Billman. Jim. Yes, it was like Lizzie Bowman. I told her the story then. The story of Lizzie Bowman. It was the old jingle that began running through my brain. Lizzie Bowman took an axe, and she gave her mother forty wax. When she saw what she'd done, she gave her father forty-one. They accused Lizzie Bowman of murdering her parents one hot summer day after she came in from sleeping in the hay barn. He said she took an axe to them. It's a famous case, and now Anita was shuddering in my arms. Anita, oh, Jim, Jim, don't tell me stories like that. Are you trying to compare me to that woman? You're hinting that I took an axe to my uncle? Jim, I'm not hinting anything. But it's pointing out that you have similar were cases to Lizzie Boland's. Anita. Maybe that's the explanation of her place, too. Maybe she was possessed by the of a demon. Maybe the black spirit that won murder descended upon her while she, when she slept, told her to wake up, took an axe, and kill. Jim, take it easy. Take it easy now. You need to stop it. And no such things. You're upset. You've got to think this thing out now. Betty, we might, must call the police. Bentley, we must call the police. You can't get around that. But right now, the thing is to try and find the axe. Jim, he started to search for the murder weapon. He covered every room. There's no axe. Barney has sent the meter to look upstairs while I went over the, pu- over the puddle again. There was nothing. My head began to swim. It was hot, quiet. There was, all, there, was only, there was only silence. The body on the floor, and its ghastly grin. Then, all at once, I saw it. Jim, he was in the, like a cloud, black cloud. It wasn't a cloud, it was a face, a face covered by a mass of smoldering smoke, a mass that leered and pressed closer. I couldn't move, and I heard something wish, wish, I turned. Anita, ah! Jim, it was Anita, as I grasped her wrist, and she screamed and fainted. Need to fall to the floor. <laughs> Jim, a black cloud over her face disappeared. Ooms. Over her face disappeared. Oozed into the air. As she fell, I pleaded, some, cried something loose from her rigid hands. It was a blood stained axe. Jim, I put her down on the sofa, went to the other room, I carried the axe with me. No sense in taking chances. I trusted neither, but at that, not that thing. Not that black thing that swelled up like smoke to take possession of living brain, make it lust to kill. In the room, I phoned the police and sat down to wait. Well, could we tell them the truth? They wouldn't believe it. Wouldn't believe that an cuckoo could enter a human body and take it, make it attempt to murder. But I knew how it must have entered into her, made her kill Gideon Godfrey. I felt the cool axe blade in my hand. As I leaned back, the verse kept going. In my head, little Bo, Lizzie Bowler took an axe. Crash of a thund- line of thunders clap. <laughs> Jim, what was that? What was what was that? I woke up with a start. At first, I thought the police had arrived. I realised it was thunder. A heat storm was breaking. Evelyn had gone up from the chair. I realised something was missing. The axe was gone from my hands. Anita, she must have wakened while I slept, come in here and stole the axe again. Yes, what a fool I was to sleep. The demon had come back to her. Entered into her. I faced the door. Saw the trail of blood. It was true. I ran into the other room. Jim, then I gasped with relief. 
but Nita was still lying on the couch. I looked at the trail of blood on the floor, but the first time I noticed it seemed to lead away from her, not towards her. What I, did it mean? It meant she wasn't possessed by the demon for now, for now while she slept. Maybe, maybe the demon came to me. I dozed off. I was trying to remember. Where was the axe? Where did it, could it be now? <laughs> Jim. Then I knew, knew everything. Knew the demon had entered me while I slept. Knew I, what I'd done, because I saw the axe now. Crystal clear, that axe buried a hilt on top of Anita's head. <laughs>